bandwidth is one of the things that make a website slow or fast. It's not the only thing, but it's one of the driving factors in website performance. Bandwidth is very variable depending on where we are. If we are on Wi-Fi in a good area, well connected, we can get uh, very high speed internet. And as we roam on the road, we sometimes get a good cell tower signal. But as we get further uh, into remote areas, inside buildings, or when there's a lot of people, big crowds at an airport, all trying to get their signal from a single access point, suddenly bandwidth becomes a, a scarce resource. This post and this um, video that we're going to have right now with this discussion is about optimizing your website to minimize bandwidth while keeping all the quality that your users expect from your pages. So let's go one by one uh, by starting with two benefits that um, you know, you're going to have in addition to uh, users that can access your content faster and as a result be more satisfied. The first one is that bandwidth costs money. It costs money to your infrastructure provider, whether they charge you for it or not. In many of the cloud providers, it's actually an itemized bill where you pay for bandwidth and if you have a site with a lot of photos or a lot of videos and you're hosting that yourself, your bandwidth bill can get huge. So the first benefit, in addition to the user experience, is that you're going to have lower cost. The second benefit is that the large search engines like Bing and Google have publicly stated that website performance, how fast your pages load, is a ranking factor, which means that the faster your website can get to the user, the higher your website is going to rank when people search for terms, keywords in Google or in Bing. So these two things, really with the fact that you know, users get a better experience, really drive the need for optimizing for bandwidth. So how do we do it? The first one is an easy win. And that's done in, um, in, in two places. Uh, the first is that when uh, a website sends information over to a device, it can decide to, in to compress that information or not. It's an on-off setting that is very easy to implement and that's actually not there by default in many of the default settings when you get a website naturally you don't have this gzip compression setting that's turned on so there's several ways to do it but most of the time in websites running php it's in the ht access file that you will put gzip compression code requests such that every time a user requests information from your site, it'll come to your user already compressed with minimum bandwidth. And then inside the browser, the phone or the computer will decompress the contents locally. And basically it's going to be the same quality, but it's just going to be able to travel over the internet on a small footprint. Other ways to do compression, especially if you have a lot of images, is to compress either losslessly, meaning you keep the same quality, or in a lossy fashion, you compress even more, uh, using the JPEG format. When you save something as a JPEG in most video or um, image editors, you can basically set the compression settings of your JPEG file. And now there's a new format that compresses even more than JPEG called WebP sponsored by Google, recommended by Google, where uh, it's going to be even more efficient. For video, you've got uh, compression codecs. For example, right now we're at H.264. It's uh, right now the, the most popular compression 
codec and H.265 is coming out with 4K content. The fact that you compress video will natively make your high definition video files much smaller than they would be otherwise. And you can save maybe you know, half the bandwidth because you compress properly. Another thing that you can do that makes a huge difference is to never upload images to your blog post or to your website or to your web pages in a much larger size than you will be showing them to the desktop users because the desktop is as big as it's going to get and if for example your site has a width of a thousand pixels the largest size of an image that you upload should never be more than a thousand pixels so if you upload a size of say 2500 pixels in width you will never be able to show it to your users because you have a width that is a thousand so if your width is 1000 you should always upload at most 1000 pixel width images and then smaller ones such that when you serve or when your web pages come across they are never having to serve images that are too big and then get resized because all you do is you incur the cost with your host and your infrastructure provider your user consumes more bandwidth but they never get to benefit from that bandwidth another big confusion in uh, using bandwidth efficiently is scaling images and resizing images if you resize an image it means that you're going to upload it at 2500 pixels and then you're going to resize it to 1000 and then if you have a smartphone at 400 pixels of width your 2500 pixels are going to get down to 400 but you're still going to be resizing that image but you're going to send the big file you're going to send a huge file over to the user and that's going to consume a lot of time and the page is going to be really really slow to load what happens in many cases is when you save an image you can save multiple sizes at a time you can save the full image and then the mid-size image and then the thumbnail image and your web content management system WordPress for example will decide if your theme is well done it will decide which of the three images it's going to send to the user so if it's on a mobile it's on a mobile device it's going to give the smaller version that won't have to be resized small footprint because the phone will not benefit from the full size image another thing to consider there are many tools like Cloudflare that have settings that allow you to strip meaning remove unused lines of code it's very common when developers want to leave some messages as text in code just for them to understand what the code executes they um, they hide that uh, contents um, you know with uh, two columns for example and uh, the code minification allows you to remove those lines of explanatory text which for a machine doesn't do anything and for people consuming your content they will never see the code however uh, if uh, you uh, do that as a developer of course your native code will still have all the comments and all the code so you're not losing anything as a developer you're just making it easier for your users to uh, download the page because you minify you remove all the spacing that's unnecessary uh, and these tools like Cloudflare they do it for you you just have to turn it on so you gain a few a few you gain a few bytes in your in your page load Finally, there are ways now that the uh, large platform providers like Google and Facebook help you do the job already with resizing and with optimizing your web pages for bandwidth. AMP pages, as an example, are stored on Google servers and Google optimizes the size of the images and the size of the code based on the device so Google tests that the device has just enough to download the picture and based on what the device can download it'll give the device 
the lowest possible resolution or maybe a little bit better for better quality such that the user will always get the best bang for the bandwidth the best bang for the buck and the same thing goes for the instant articles using the Facebook HTML Facebook will basically strip down to the minimum the contents in terms of text and the images and the video and it will just serve the right format that consumes the minimum and it will do it once it's all set up there's a little bit of a setup for AMP and for instant articles once this is set up for your site all of these things will be done automatically so I hope that will give you some ideas and uh, good luck with optimizing for bandwidth cheers